today's lab is the freezing point depression lab. So here in my hood, I have everything that I need. Um, so I have a large beaker. That's where our ice bath is going to go. I also have um, two test tubes that are kind of fitted together. Um, this big one is kind of just for insulation. Um, I'm also going to have the stir in there um, when we start freezing our sample. Uh, I also have some water. We're going to dissolve about 50 grams of salt. Salt is here as well. I have the cyclohexane. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is dissolve this um, sodium chloride, the salt, into this water and then make that happen. over the ice bath. So we want to make this ice bath really cold so that we can freeze the cyclohexane. Um, and then once the cyclohexane is frozen, uh, we're going to take it out of the ice bath and then monitor the uh, temperature every 30 seconds until it reaches the temperature about, I think like 10 to 12 degrees. And then you're going to plot that um, to find the freezing point um, of your cyclohexane. And then in part B, we're going to do something similar but we're going to have an unknown sample inside the cyclohexane. We're going to freeze it again, and then um, once it's frozen, we will again take the temperature every 30 seconds, and you'll graph that. So you can see the difference, and then you'll find the freezing point of that solution. So you should see that the freezing point of the solution is going to be lower than the freezing point of your pure solvent. So that's the the freezing point depression, that colligative property um, of freezing point. All right, so I have dissolved the sodium chloride in the water, so I'm just going to pour that in my ice bath that I made in this 800 milliliter beaker. I also measured out um, 10 milliliters, 10.0 milliliters of the cyclohexane. I'm going to put that into my um, nested test tubes here. And then I will fit a thermometer in there as well as this little stirring wire. So you can kind of stir it up to make sure all of the solution, all of that solvent um, gets dissolved. And the rest of this water in there. Then I may also add a few more ice cubes just, just to make sure that that's when we're going to start measuring the time. Uh, every 30 seconds, we're gonna take the temperature um, until this solution gets to about 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna lower that into the ice bath and then just wait for that. Also notice I am working inside the hood, so you should be able to hear now. There's a lot, of, a lot more background noise. Um, so that is the hoods. Um, we are using cyclohexane, which is a flammable substance. So I also do not have any um, heat, heating mechanisms, or Bunsen burners or anything in here um, because that is a flammable um, liquid. There. So this hood should be conducted inside the hood. stir anymore so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up out of this ice bath and then I'm going to take the temperature so I have my thermometer in there every 30 seconds until the temperature gets to um, somewhere between 10 and 12 degrees so that you have enough uh, points to make your plot to find you know, the freezing was frozen and now it is all liquid again so it's come up to a uh, temperature of about 11.3 degrees um, so that finishes the procedure part for part A um, so you'll have to graph that information and find the experimental freezing point of your cyclohexane. Um, so moving on to part B we're going to find the freezing point of a solution so we have an unknown um, 
that you are going to find the molar mass. That's the kind of the purpose of part B. Um, so we're going to add the molar mass. We're going to add the mass of the unknown. And then we're also going to make sure that dissolves in our cyclohexane. I'm going to use the cyclo same cyclohexane that I have here. And then I'm going to put it in our ice bath. And we're going to let that freeze and do the same process. ice bath just because I want to make sure that this fresh ice bath can get cold enough that it can freeze this um, solution. Okay, so my substance is pretty much dissolved in here. So now I'm going to add it to that ice bath and we're going to wait for it to freeze again. Okay, so we'll just let that freeze and then we'll come back um, once that is frozen and take it up out of the ice bath and then take the temperature of that every 30 seconds until um, the temperature increases again to about 10 to 12 degrees um, so that you can make that warming curve um, so you can find the experimental value of your uh, freezing point for the solution. Okay, our solution is frozen now, so I'm going to take it up out of the um, ice bath and I'm going to monitor the temperature every 30 seconds um, until we've reached the temperature about between 10 and 12 degrees. Okay, so our temperature is now about 11 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to go ahead and stop taking the temperature every 30 seconds. Um, you do have enough data that you can plot to find or experimental, um, so you can find the experimental freezing point of your solution. Um, so you're gonna use that freezing point of your solution um, for calculating the molar mass of your unknown. Um, so this is the end of the procedure. So what you need to do now um, would be to put this in the waste container. So I have a flammable waste container that I'm going to dump this out in. And then I'm going to make sure that I carefully clean all of my glassware, especially um, the beaker that has salt water, any of the beakers that have salt water in them, because if that dries out, it's going to leave a lot of residue. So make sure that you always wash your glassware so that it is actually clean.